listen. Who would have thought in the 70s that the Charlie's Angels franchise would become a franchise like everything else in the year 2019? It started with the show in 76, they've had a comic series, some board games, a lot of video games, movies, soundtracks, an animated web series, so much merch and collectibles that a red swimsuit poster of Farrah Fawcett set a record with over 20 million posters sold in the 70s. It was so big that that suit got inducted into the Smithsonian. Do you remember this red swimsuit? Remember, I had it. So shout out to Raycon for sponsoring this franchise recap, where we're gonna be covering all of the film series of this property, starting way, way back in the year 2000. Let me explain. So if you haven't rewatched the first two movie adaptations from the early 2000s, they're all on Netflix at the moment and they are wild, wild rides. Drew Barrymore had actually purchased the screening rights from the original TV series. Each person, when you talk about what kind of film it would be, had a different idea. Some thought it should be a spoof. Some thought it should be a remake of the show. Some thought it should be a cold cutting, hard cutting action film. Some people thought it should be a comedy. Um, I thought, how do you amalgamate all those hopes and modernize it, yet honoring the series? You, you know, we never wanted to insult the show. That was so important. <laughs> She got John Forsyth to reprise his role as Charlie from the original series. She was able to get the whole cast together. She's the one who wanted the Angels to have absolutely no guns. Yeah. And we jump out of airplanes and drive speedboats and race cars. So there's so much going on, you don't miss that. And right. I think that's the important thing to do is don't just take something away, replace it with something exactly. fun. That said, once people saw Cameron Diaz doing wire foo, it was like being a meme on Ellen. Action immediately started veering the other way. Hell, there were more serious shots in the scary movie parody of Charlie's Angels than in Charlie's Angels. Barrymore also hired McGee, who had only directed music videos at that point, but he had done classics such as Some Barrymore then chose him to direct this. Dude didn't even have a script for most of it, and boy does it show. Roger Ebert called this movie a trailer for a video game, like not even the movie, a trailer for a video game movie lacking only the video game and the movie. Charlie's Angels was his first feature film in which he was only paid $350,000 for directing, but that 250 million box office is what made this movie iconic. Like if you search up all of these actresses, Charlie's Angels pops up as one of the most prolific films within their filmography, and it's, it's a memorable one. And what's your favorite outfit that Alex wears? The car outfit. With the red, white, and blue right, that's stars? Right. That's my favorite. You like that the one? Car, oh yeah. The intro to the first has a dude jumping out of a plane because another dude has a bomb strapped to him and it turns out that that dude is Drew Barrymore. It's a duo of films that showcased how much Hollywood didn't give a crap in the early 2000s with classic lines from both such as You know, I signed that release waiver so you can just feel free to stick things in my slot. I could use someone like you on my staff. Thanks for the offer, but my hands aren't going anywhere near your staff. <laughs> this is going to be long, hard, and rough. Sometimes when it's rough, I just get there faster. You like fast cars? I like fast everything. When it's big like that, I just love to ride it hard and rough. The way I was getting pounded, I'm gonna be wet for hours. You were the cop? I was the beaver! It had cameos and appearances by Dead Moose Humper Tom Green, who at that time hadn't done Freddy Got Fingered, but had done Drew. Pink Shia LaBeouf when he was You're just a kid. I'm 15 and a half. Melissa McCarthy before she herself became a spy. It even has famous TV star Matt LeBlanc from the critically acclaimed sitcom Joey. Obviously, something like this can't be replicated today. Like, we did get a reboot to it. It's nowhere near these two over here. But it's interesting doing research for this video and hearing all of the behind the scenes mayhem that these actresses had to go through. Because, Lucy, you've had martial arts training before. Did, did you teach the girls some things? <laughs> Everybody thinks she's like the aficionado on Kung Fu. <laughs> and maybe it's because I'm Asian. <laughs> <laughs> they had them working out eight hours a day for four months straight. Their stories of arguments turning into fights, actors second guessing lines and scenes from an already non existent script. And it overall creates this dichotomy of a female led franchise who did kick ass, who are leading their own movie. They're using their sexuality to do what angels do best and distract the foolish men around them. 
and still being a movie done by the foolish men around them. What do you find most engaging about the three angels? Their wardrobes. The angels gotta look absolutely extraordinary. They look damn good. There's definitely a lot of memorable campiness within the films. I, I do love the story behind the creepy Crispin whose dad in real life was actually a Bond villain from Diamonds Are Forever and one of the suits they had him in in the movies was the suit his dad wore in that movie. The original angels did have iconic outfits. They, they turned into Charlie's battle angels and in fact Barrymore was the one who talked Cameron Diaz in to making more money with every role she got in the future. I've said this in the past, Cameron Diaz is a legend. The Frank Ocean of film with the way she secured the bags. And yet, then what was the finally, reason for doing this? We, we you know, <laughs> yeah, we, <laughs> press. Why are we here right now? <laughs> Boring ourselves. That said, Lucy is still easily the best angel. A goofy, goofy stream it for both. Now, the new one was inevitable. It does seem like it was done to take some rights away, but you've heard us cover franchises and you know the buffoonery that happens behind the scenes when it comes to these big studios and their properties. Yet it does seem like Elizabeth Banks was having a fun time writing, starring, producing, and directing the new one, which is good because someone had to. It's a lot to process, which is what part of the fun of watching the scene is. Now, in my opinion, it's not a terrible reboot. I just don't see the merit behind it. Like, what was the purpose of it? Why this out of everything else? Like, remember when Barrymore fought to have guns removed instead opting on having all of the angels working out to the point that their limbs had to be moved with wires because of how sore they were. You got a no, I'm James. Oh. That said, Banks did have the complete opposite mantra when dealing with overly tight outfits to the point that while she didn't have the star power of the 2000s, at least they got to pick their own clothes. Actually, you know in the shot of us three walking in the trailer? Oh yeah. Yeah, those are my own cargo pants. <laughs> Banks, again, seems to be having a great time directing action for the first time, even if I wasn't a fan of it. Like, I would take that wire foo from the first ones any day. Way more entertaining than seeing Taken 3 editing. They do pay homage to the 2000s by photoshopping Patrick Stewart as their Bosley, quoting Miss Independent from the original soundtrack while having a pretty decent one themselves, but when it came to the angels themselves, I don't think they surpassed the originals or the original originals at all. Jane was dope because she was an MI6 agent and obviously Lemonade fans are determined to see everything with Naomi Scott, but I was so confused with Kristen Stewart's part. I know a lot of people don't like her because they think that her delivery is too dry, but no, I, I, I don't think she's a bad actress. I thought she was great in Personal Shopper as the ghost. That said, if you wanted a great female-led action spy thriller, catch Atomic Blonde, Mad Max, hell, anything with Charlie Theron. Just know it won't have Noah Centennial. You're really not supposed to be touching things in here unless you're supposed to be touching things in here. Man, I had someone tell me they thought Noah Centennial was a James Dean of this era, which I would have deemed the stupidest take I've ever heard, till I learned they wanted to make James Dean the James Dean of this era. Honestly, this installment just feels like the middle one in the never-ending era of franchises. You know, there's always that one that you look back on and go, what the heck were they doing there? It's gonna be the one we're gonna forget by the time they do get the Charlie's Angel spin-off right in like 2033, but it's just confusing to see a lot of these pop up this year. I mean, we know it's cause of money, but like, you have an entire franchise to work with and this is what you give us? They have so much more to work with other than seeing the same twist we see all the time by the end of it. Like, we just saw the same twist in the Men in Black installment that we're all gonna forget. Y'all should have made Farrah Fawcett Charlie when you had the chance back in the day. Y'all should have brought back any of these ladies if you were already going to pay homage to them. But instead, we get a series of after credits where we learn that Ronda Rousey's an angel, along with the entire cast of Pitch Perfect Barton Bellas. I wanted to get involved because I wanted to tell a story about women at work. Well, in that case, I'll just go watch Totally Spies instead. Thank you guys for watching this video, and a big shout out to Raycon for partnering with us again. Uh, Ray J picked up the phone, again, still don't know who he called, but the company he founded hit us up to do another partnership, and what better franchise than the one that had a bumping album? We previously talked about them in our Hobbs v Diesel video, so we've had the headphones for a couple of months now, and they're still going strong, long battery life at half the price, perfect when we're editing for hours, the boxing is gorgeous, and there's literally no experience, like move around with absolutely no wires in your way. In that case, man, you...
I mean, the, the case is still just as soft as the first time. I have the Raycon E25s, and they're actually having a Raycon Black Friday sale and a Cyber Monday deal that I'll have linked down below in the description for you to click. But if you need a new headphones, right, and you wanted to help out this channel, if you like what we do here, let me explain. Raycon and all of our other sponsors make that possible. So what better way to support the channel than to treat yourself to something nice? Thank you guys again for watching this video. Let me know your thoughts on the Charlie's Angels series, which one your favorite is. Again, these franchises, they're not going anywhere. Like, honestly, even if one thing tanks, it's just a matter of time before they bring it back in another form, be it again a TV series, a movie, video game. There may even be an entire VR experience, if not a ride for this franchise. So let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. And they'll cast Noah Centineo as the next Bond girl.